Hey folks, let's take a look at Linux on mobile phones in 2022. So I bought this OnePlus 6 for $85 on eBay, and it's an Android phone that comes with a specific fast chip, the Snapdragon 8.5, that can run mainline Linux. I decided to go with this versus a Linux first phone, like the Prime phone or the Librem 5, because you get way faster hardware for way less money. But while buying used Android phones does create less waste, it also doesn't support open source projects like buying a new Linux phone would. So I gave $25 each to the GNOME project and Postmarket OS. So here I'm running Postmarket OS with GNOME Shell with the new mobile patches from Jonas Dressler and Tobias Bernard applied and the Linux 6.1 kernel. And so this is full responsive but desktop Linux, uh, including desktop multitasking. So when you background apps, they still run at full speed which can of course touch battery life, but as we'll see soon, doesn't actually have that much of an impact. And as you can see, they built in this support for two directional uh, gestures. So it basically feels like uh, Android or iOS, where you can change the direction of your gesture in the middle of the gesture. It will open up YouTube, plays normally, and as you can see, when it goes into the background, it continues to play normally. We'll start a timer. This is a uh, known clocks. And let's stress this a little. Let's open up a couple apps and see how it performs. Calculator, calendar, files. So this is full desktop Nautilus that is now responsive since GNOME 43 and has full file system access, unlike on an iOS or Android device. Desktop known settings. Desktop software where you can add or remove software. GNOME Calendar, which is the same as the desktop app, but uh, fully responsive. GNOME Maps, with its back end of OpenStreetMap, which includes navigation and location support. And as you can see, everything stays responsive. So what's the impact of battery and memory? Well, battery, I get about three days of idle battery life out of this on Wi-Fi, but if you put in a cellular a SIM card, you should get around one day. So very comparable to the same performance on uh, Android um, for the same chip. So it's a very efficient and very fast chip, as you can see. But Linux is already pretty well optimized for. Now memory, you can see we're using only about 1.4 gigabytes of memory of the eight that this phone has. So this has all felt pretty iOS-like until now. But because it's not locked down, you can do whatever you like on this. So for an example, we can load on Node and host a web server on your phone. Here we installed Node 16, which is the latest LTS. And as you can see, everything continues to play in the background. So let's take a look at the adaptive quick settings, which is the same that will run on Fedora or Ubuntu on your desktop, but here runs on your phone. Dark mode, light mode, they're all supported, as are, as are most of the quick toggles. Okay, so that was a quick demo of Linux on the OnePlus 6. Next up, let's look at how to load it on. So while the device still has Android on it, you'll go to Settings, and you'll tap the kernel version five times until it asks you to enter your PIN, and you enter Developer Mode. Then, you find the Developer Options, and enable OEM Unlocking, and again it asks to retype your PIN.
Then you shut it down and restart the phone holding volume up and power button and you'll get into this fast boot mode. Plug it into your desktop and as you can see I'm running the exact same version of GNOME here. Uh, you can go to the Postmarket OS page and download the image for your phone. They also support other phones but these are the main, mainly supported ones. I'm going to install Edge here because that already supports GNOME Mobile. And once you have these two images, we'll go to the wiki and find the guide for our phone. Here the OnePlus 6. And here you can see next to a full guide, we get these three main commands, which we'll do next. So first we'll unlock the bootloader. Then we'll erase the main memory, then we'll flash the main boot, and then the user image. I'm fast forwarding here slightly. And that's it. You now restart your phone and you'll have full mobile Linux running on your mobile phone. And that's it, Linux on a mobile phone in 2022. Don't forget to support your favorite open source software um, like No Mobile, KDE Mobile, Postmarket OS, or via Librem 5, because that's how developers can afford to continue the build out of these systems. Uh, and maybe one day we'll have a third mobile ecosystem next to iOS and Android. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.